Hello and welcome to the Business Octopus, where we talk about all things sales, marketing and technology. I'm Avon Collis, CRM and Marketing Automation Specialist at Relevate and All Around Good Guy. Today I'm joined by Karina and Dave from Super Yachts 153, here to talk about their experience setting up a new CRM for their business. Welcome, how are you going? Good morning, good, thank you. How are you today? <laughs> not too bad, not too bad. <laughs> um, so if you're listening in, these guys have a company that helps people uh, with super yachts have uh, an amazing experience when they come into port. So, you know, uh, do you want to just talk talk through some of the some of the things that you do for them? Sure. So we're basically uh, land-based support for super yachts. So we deal directly with the captain or the managing um, organization with these vessels, not directly with the owners. We help them uh, with their embarkation and disembarkation to Australia and anything they need required while um, during their time here on our beautiful land. So that would be things like um, visas, um, things that they're going to do when they're on shore, fuel, food. Security, fuel, yep, uniforms, flowers from, yep, anything the chef may require, um, mm. engine room, parts, whatever. And you can understand why I wouldn't deal with the owner for that because they're outsourcing all of that if they got the money, <laughs> pay someone else to do it. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> So um, I guess uh, what, what we sort of wanted to, to cover here today was uh, obviously you implemented a CRM for your business and uh, I just sort of wanted to go through um, what made you decide that you needed a CRM? Well, uh, Corinne had worked on super yachts uh, for nine years and uh, she'd seen how efficient uh, CRM programs had been for other agencies overseas working for them. So mm. that was her idea to, to research CRM um, and we stumbled across Soho and uh, this has been terrific for us. So mm. um, yeah, that's that was really the, the initial thought behind it, wasn't it? Yeah, definitely. We sort of, um, the whole aim of the game, I feel that within the super yacht industry is uh, being a crew member on board one of these vessels. It's all about efficiency and preempting their next move. So you want yeah. to be ahead and, and know what they want, the guests want before the guests and owners, before they know what they want. So we want to do the same thing land based here in Australia, preempting what these vessels would require and having it ready before they even know what it is they want. So you'd have quite a few vessels coming in and, and you'd, you'd probably have, um, you know, not be able to remember them all or, or remember all the conversations or, you know, maybe you've got to pass that information on to somebody else. Absolutely. And, and the little things, I, you know, as um, we mentioned in a conversation, they may want a, a carton of Forex and in bottles, not cans. And, you know, <laughs> those, those finer details, all those small things need to be documented and we need to be on top of that information. We don't want to be asking them 10,000 questions. We want one question, one answer, and we want to have it there on the dock waiting on for their arrival. Yeah, yeah I, I was watching a, um, a thing about luxury services and there was things where um, they were talking about like everything from gold-plated uh, hamburgers to... Um, to caviar and, and this and that and you know the nuanced requests that uh, that come through uh, obviously they're paying top dollar for top quality service so you definitely want to make sure everyone is across that particularly if, if they're ordering flowers for a, um, a, a vessel and, and someone on board happens to be allergic to um, lavender or, or whatever that ha that happens to be but um, you can certainly understand where you know having that detail is really important Absolutely. The detail and, and the amount of detail and the detail across many different sections, whether it's engineering or florist or um, so storing that information and having that information, particularly at the start of our business when it is just the two of us mm. to have a program like this where we can store access and, and automate a lot of this information is hugely important. Mm. Yeah, because I think a lot of, uh, and, and the, the important thing there is like with the two of you, so you're not too small to have a CRM. And I think that, um, you know, we talk about having, giving your business a brain and teaching it to grow itself. It's sort of like, how do you put that information in the middle for everyone else to access? You, you hear so many small businesses that have everything stored in the owner's brain and they can never sell it. They can never move it. They can never leave. Um, <laughs> so from day one, that, that or, or, you know, from very early on, that is very powerful. Definitely. And I mean, we, we look at it too, like, you know, we're, we're not um, building the business necessarily to sell it, you know, next year, but that's the idea. If we can 
on sell this, you know, when we're getting old and crickety and, and can't do it anymore, then everything is going to be there, easy, accessible, and we can continue to support our superior industry here in Australia, which is what we want for Australia and our economy. I think whether you're, you're selling a business or not, you should always structure it so that you can. And that's purely from the fact of if it's structured the way that you can sell it, it means that you can step away from it and have a holiday. It means yes. that um, <laughs> there are management processes and structures in place. Yes. Um, you know, there's procedures and safety nets and all that sort of stuff. It just makes for a, for a good uh, uh, sleep at night factor. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. And when you've got information coming at you 24 hours a day, you mm. do not want to miss one single little piece of that. It's all very important. Now, we talked about, um, you know, providing additional side benefits that you never thought possible. So things like um, maybe just by virtue of the data that you are collecting, being able to create new reports and insights. Do you think um, that would be useful? And I, I, I'm imagining that in a few years time, you'd be able to look uh, historically back and say, you know, we had 300 vessels uh, import every year for the last two years. And uh, in the last 30 days, there's been a spike or something like that. And then maybe you can go and approach um, suppliers and say, look at us, we've got, uh, we've got this, this data and you should give us a, a better rate. Or you go to government and you say, hey, we need some investment here. Can you give us a grant or, or something like that? You hit the nail on the head with government, I yep. think. <laughs> Government's the big one for sure yes. for us because we're also looking at uh, marine helping regional, coastal regional towns with marine infrastructure and, and smaller places be able to service super yachts. So, yeah. I think, you know, having that data and, and showing an increase in vessels coming to Australia and, and, and being able to provide local council or mm -hmm. state government with that data, um, that would be a huge benefit. Yeah, Because yeah, you're sort of a custodian of, of um, council property, basically. Yes. Yep. Yeah. And, and being able to provide that data and, and show that, you know, you need to put investment into your port facilities and make it an attractive environment all helps the economy, helps all the local businesses, helps the tour operators, you know, in this post COVID world that, you know, it, 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 your tourism is going to be a big uh, um, uh, factor in terms of growing our economy as well. Certainly. Yep. So, so, it's worth millions of dollars um, per yacht to the economy itself. So yeah, yeah the, the more regional oh. towns that can access them, the better. I, I'm thinking about a, a value chain here. So the um, uh, millionaire steps off yacht, goes into local shop, buys an Opal. Opal was mined in Western, in Cooper PD. Um, it was driven by a truck. Um, it was washed off by um, someone doing an apprenticeship. And uh, and then the digger was supplied and, and serviced. And like, there's a whole cycle that, that the people don't think about. They're like, oh, they spent money at this fish and chip shop, great. Yeah. yeah, and that's just the owner. So then you go down the path of the crew and what, what benefits it. So the crew were not only going to get provisions for the vessels, so not yep. only what they need for the, for themselves and the guests, but they're spending an activity. So they're going, if they've got to have a short time, they're going to want to see and do as much in Australia as possible because mm. their window is limited before the guests come back and they're back on, uh, on duty again. So, yeah, yeah. It's, just an, it's a domino effect. Absolutely. And I, I know that when I go overseas, I'm, I'm trying to try the, the local delicacies and, and uh, you know, yeah. even little things from going to the supermarket to trying the local beers. So, you know, mm -hmm. maybe uh, uh, some local uh, brewers might, uh, might pick up some, some business. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's everything that we're sort of looking at promoting, you know, at the moment, these vessels will go from Sydney up to the Gold Coast and we want them to hit every single small regional town possible on their way yeah. up and further. So, yeah, yes. so, so you almost become a bit of a game changer in your industry. Definitely, definitely. So what, what was the process like in um, that you went through to, to get to where you are now? <laughs> <laughs> it was fun. It was um, just trial and error, I think, and uh, troubleshooting elimination process, but we really enjoyed it. I found it very exciting because I would look forward to you know, the potential that this can unlock for our business. Like my mind, one little avenue that we would learn, my mind would just go a thousand miles an hour going, oh my God, in the future, we can do this, 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 and this, and this. Like we've just got to, you know, eliminate the steps in the process to sort of yep. get there. And that's all, uh, it's just going to take some time and us utilizing the program as much as possible and yep. getting the most out of it, really. I think uh, for, for, for me particularly, 
coming from more of a service background and not so much a, an IT background. Um, just the process of running through it and understanding. So at first it seemed quite daunting because the program seemed huge. Mm. And we break it down each session that we go through and we have a, a clear understanding of that part of that we've, we've learned in that lesson and then we, we carry on. And, and now after our five video lessons and the online course that feel like we have, have a good understanding of the program and the benefits that we can get out of it for and, sure. And the recording. I mean, if there's something that we feel that, yeah, we've mm. done it correct, but it may not work. Oh, no, you know what? We've got that in the recording. We'll just go back to that. Have a quick look. Okay, that's how you do it. Off you go again. And it's, yeah. Yep. So. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, I intentionally asked a very open question uh, to, to get your response. But I think that uh, you, 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 you sort of sort of, highlighted exactly what I wanted to, to get to is that it's a it's a bit of a process you are gonna stuff it uh, a little bit and I think that the most important thing is people just get to get in get their hands dirty try things um, like I woke up this morning with a, a brainwave on how I was going to store a piece of information so I went in and, and I made a tweak to something of mine because you know we've got um, and, and there's all this like back-end stuff that people don't even consider is, is doable. So, you know, we've got a, um, a team of people. Um, we also meet a lot of great people that we think they've got some unique skills. We want to use them again in the future. And instead of just, you know, getting to the point of going, oh, crap, we need someone, how do we find them? Um, I've, I've created a, a module which allows me to create uh, uh, potential resources. So we've met them. We've seen them, their work somewhere else. We know what their skills are and we've been able to track that. And so the downstream effect of that is when we need to scale, we've got a pool of people that we can send an email to and directly reach out to instead of potentially going to, you know, spending $350 on seek.com for, for an ad, you know, spending an hour writing a, a job description for that. Um, maybe, you know, uh, getting a, um, a recruiter at 20% of salary to go and find X person. So there are a number of other uh, effects, even just like the time between you guys sharing information can be down to, you know, an instant on your, your mobile device, they get a little bling and it's related to all of the other information about that issue or that person or that result. So the fact that you had the vision of what it could do uh, was really, really good. And the fact that you kind of trusted the process along the way that the end result was, was worth it. And I think that, um, sometimes people, uh, like you've got to go through a certain few hoops or hurdles to get to the gold. It's kind of like, you don't want to go, um, trying to wheedle it back as to where you think it should be, because it's not going to, to be as an effective output. It's like buying a car, but, uh, uh saying, oh, we don't want the wheels. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 So I think, um, yeah, and you know, like on that car example, you don't, you know, well, you're not born knowing how to walk and certainly not how to drive. You know, it takes a process to learn how to do that. And then you want to go faster. You've got to take, you know, a car and you've got to learn how to use that car. You want to go faster again, you take a rocket ship and it takes a bit of time to develop, build and grow and then learn how to drive that rocket ship. So, um, Fantastic. Sorry, I've been uh, taking on. <laughs> you hit the nail on the head. Then the more you use it, the more confident you get with the program yeah. or with the car or whatever. And the next minute you'll be doing it with your eyes closed. So we're, we're certainly hopefully. not at the end goal yet. <laughs> no, and neither are we. And we've been doing it for years. And I think that um, the the thing that we that I try to do and try to show people is that we need to level up as as a as a people, as a culture, as a nation in terms of our base level of experience in this because it's the it's going to be like driving a car in that everybody does it it's a critical part of getting around and daily life so yeah. if you don't know how to do it just get on board and learn you better yeah, learn so, yep. yeah. and with all due respect to i mean you know i love australia it's my my homeland it's great we are sometimes respectively a big island and sometimes behind a little bit when it comes with stuff like this the rest of the world but you know, um, their technology is a lot more forefront. So, you know, programs like this, mm. exactly like you say, you know, get on board and, you know, um, get involved and, and because it's it's the way forward for sure. <laughs> I, I almost feel like it should be taught in schools. And, you know, like, uh, yeah. Dave, you mentioned that side of, um, you know, it seemed this big thing at first, but then you learn, 
you know, how to build a form. You learn how to, uh, what a field is and what it tracks, um, you know, maybe a trigger or an automation or a workflow. Like there's some language there that's like gear stick accelerator steering wheel. Uh-huh. Once you learn what it is, it's fine. It's, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's so right. And it's transferable no matter what platform you use to a mm-hmm. large degree. Yeah. yeah. So um, I guess what were some of the, the, the challenges that you experienced? Uh, probably my initial knowledge base <laughs> was, was a challenge um, and understanding um, what the program could do, I think. But I think that the session certainly broke that down well enough for me to understand it. Yeah. Uh, having, having time, because we are a new business, having time to really spend on, mm. on you know, outside of the sessions and, and learning mm. that putting that in I found when I when I did have time and I really got more out of the sessions that we put in and really understand and then those sessions that I (laughs) was lazy and didn't get put in the effort then yeah certainly noticed that as well so that was certainly a challenge for us yeah I, I, I think that, um, yeah, the, the, the fact that there's a bit of learning and homework on your side, you know, it's not just, I think you've gone through the best possible way to do this in that you've, you've kind of had a bit more of a self-directed drive to, to get it done. I think sometimes when people go, um, you just build it for me, it becomes this, this uh, widget or a magic bullet and then no one knows it, no one touches it, no one does anything with it. And, uh, and I think from that, that asynchronous learning is that, you know, being able to go back and watch that video, get, being able to log into the course platform, you know, not necessarily having to constantly spend time uh, with me. You could do it after hours. You can watch it on your phone. You can do something. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I, yeah that's, that's really the big part of it is, is being able to understand the program and being able to adjust it in the future as well. And I that's- think- that's it. That's exactly it. Like, you know, we're all about efficiency. If we want to change something on a yeah. form that's not going to work for us anymore, we want to be able to change it then and there Instantly. and have it done yeah. instead of, you know, Having reaching out to a third yeah. party and, yeah. you know, and then wait for a day response or something. So, yep. yes. Yeah, absolutely. And so you, you've kind of gone through a bit of an evolution. Mm. So you kind of at the next level. So, so, all right. So, what, um, what can you do now that you couldn't do before? All of it. Yeah. <laughs> everything <laughs> I, I mean like a, a broadly as a, as a business you know so we talked about um you can bring out new data and insights to provide to other people you can you know um i don't think we've gone through this but you can capture online payment on your forms um you know we've already done the lead capture stuff we've already done um some of the email automation stuff what, what are some other, like, aside from the features, what sort of, like, as a business capability can you do now that you couldn't do? I think it allows us the capability um, to process a lot more. So, you know, being as we touched on it before, it's just the two of us. Hmm. But be able to handle many more vessels coming into Australia because of this program, because of the automation that it can do. So it allows us to not employ somebody else mm-hmm. and, and, and be you know, just as efficient. Exactly. It's the same as, as marketing purposes. You know, for somebody, you genuinely would need a, um, an employee to do all your marketing on all the avenues, whether it's social media, whether it's through whatever marketing avenues you decide to go down. Mm-hmm. That's a full-time job. So, you know, even small things like that with Zoho, you know, the way that it's set up, we can market, you know, one document, put it on whatever program we want because all of our social media streams are linked through Zoho. Yeah, yeah. I think um, you, know, you, you can take more in your stride. That's definitely uh, one of the things. And we've had um, clients can handle 98% more call volume, more sales interactions and with no increase in headcount. So that is, that's almost double the output for just a bit of software, which in, in, in the grand scheme of things costs way less than an employee Absolutely. and they turn up, they don't call in sick, that um, <laughs> it does what it's supposed to do, what you tell it to do. Um, sometimes when it doesn't do what you want it to do, you, it was probably your instructions. Yeah. Right? <laughs> right. So I think that, um, you know, as far as uh, like for ourselves, we've, we've made some additional investments in our tech and we've delayed hiring someone for just that little bit longer and just that little bit longer. And so whilst that's not, um, you know, people go, oh, well, what about the economy? Well, 
the economy is, requires us to be more efficient, more profitable, more successful, so that when we do hire, we're doing it bigger, better, faster with like 10 at a time, ideally. Um, yeah. The economy requires us to exist. And, you know, that, exactly. Yeah, that, this sort of stuff, then, you know, maybe we don't. Yeah, yeah ab absolutely. You know, like the, the whole thing of, of, you know, just trying to hire more people and having headcount, that doesn't do anyone any good in the grand scheme of things. Um, you don't want to be kept poor for forevermore with uh, with just a few people. So everybody successful is is the way to go. Yeah. All right. So I, I, I really appreciate your uh, your time here uh, today. It has been really great just to hear um, your perspectives. And you know, I asked a few open questions, and we we haven't queued you up. So it's, <laughs> there's no script. So it's really fun and open. And I, I think that's uh, it's been great for me just to hear that. Let alone you know being able to capture that on recording. So again really appreciate it um so if you're listening thank you very much for uh your time uh listening and uh, you can get more info on super yachts 153 at super yachts 153.com and the link will be put in the episode comments um thank you for listening to the podcast and if you have any questions or you'd like to be on the show you can check out relevate.com.au and check out the contact form otherwise take care mm -hmm.